What is going on you guys? It's your girl Diana back at you with another YouTube video. Last night they released all of the details for what's supposed to be included in the 1.2 patch for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So today I will be going over all of the details because this is actually a huge patch. So if you're new here make sure that you subscribe so that you're always up to date with the latest Pokemon news and give this video a thumbs up so that we can push out into the YouTube algorithm so that more Pokemon fans can see it. And if you would like another way to support the channel please feel free to check out the merch store. There is a link down below in the description that takes you to not only my merch store but also all of my other socials so you can keep up with what I'm doing on a daily basis. But let's go ahead and hop into the latest patch. So I actually went ahead and briefly just skimmed this entire patch before I started filming this video. And let me tell you, they did not leave one stone unturned because we're not just getting a couple of patch notes here. We literally have like on an entire page, like paragraphs on paragraphs on paragraphs of what we're supposed to get in this new patch. So they really said, here's all the tea. That way you guys can know exactly what you're gonna get. So let's just go ahead and hop into it because as you can tell by the amount that I just scrolled, there's a lot of information to cover. So version 1.2 is scheduled for the end of February, 2023. So we will see this update in the next couple of weeks. And they say with this update, we are planning to add features to Pokemon boxes and fix bugs that affect game progress among other updates. We will continue to take your feedback very seriously and take measures to improve your gameplay experience. Okay, these boxes, that's a big thing. I mean, I'm the most unorganized person when it comes to my boxes, but if I don't see a mass release feature, I'm gonna riot because that is my biggest complaint with these boxes is that I have so many Frokies and Charmanders from Shiny Hunting, one of them, and having to individually release them is literally the bane of my existence. But starting off with our first section here, which is feature adjustments. So additional functionality will be added for Pokemon boxes. Okay, so it looks like this entire thing is gonna be about boxes. We love it. Let's see what it says about boxes. From a Pokemon summary, players will be able to change the Pokemon's nicknames, markings, hell items, and mark or ribbon related titles, as well as being able to reorder moves have Pokemon remember moves and have Pokemon forget moves and use TMs. Okay, obviously you can already do this to the Pokemon that are in your party, but you couldn't do this from the boxes before. You had to literally move them into your party in order to have any of this accessible. So I'm assuming what this is saying is that you're actually gonna be able to do that in your boxes now and you won't have to move them into your party and then move them back into your box. Players will be able to swap out held items by pressing the Y button when in the held items view. We love that, we love efficiency. Players will be able to select all boxes while moving Pokemon or items in the party and boxes view and held items view. Once again, we love efficiency. I'm also pretty sure that this was a feature in the sword and shield boxes. So it's nice that they're bringing that back. When in the battle team view, Pokemon in your boxes that are assigned to a battle team will now have their icons displayed in a darker hue if those Pokemon are members of a battle team that is currently being displayed. Okay, so it's easier to tell the difference between Pokemon that you have registered to a battle team. And the new screen will be displayed when you connect to the internet from the main menu, just as it is when connecting to the internet from the Poke Portal. I mean, I don't really care about the news page popping up every time that I connect to the internet from the actual main game. I don't even really care for it in the Poke Portal, but sure, great, amazing. I'll, I will always be up to date now. So better for you guys, because I will literally know the second anything happens. All right, moving on to bug fixes. Terra Raid Battles. Okay, Terra Raid Battles, as I'm sure many of you have experienced, are so buggy that it's like laughable sometimes. So let's see what they're doing to improve our Terra Raid Battles. So the first thing that they're fixing, a bug that can prevent an opposing Terra Pokemon's HP gauge from properly reflecting damage done by certain moves such as Play Rough or other certain status conditions may occur in Terra Raid Battles, resulting in the Terra Pokemon's HP gauge fluctuating in an unusual usual manner. This will be fixed. You hear that, Azumarill users? You can now use Play Rough Azumarill and the HP will not randomly change back up to half health after you knock out a Pokemon. So hooray for all of my Azumarill lovers. But still, don't bring that thing to every raid. It doesn't work for every raid, okay? The next one says, a bug that causes all Pokemon on your side to faint at once despite their HP gauges indicating that they still have HP may occur in Black Crystal Terra raid battles against Pokemon with the Mightiest Mark. This will be fixed. I feel like I might have experienced this once. However, I have the memory of a gold Fish, but I feel like I've heard about that happening to other people too. A bug that can temporarily prevent a player from entering any input into the game may occur if the terror Pokemon takes certain actions while the player is choosing the target of their move. This will be fixed. Oh, oh, I'm assuming this is like that random lag that you get when you're like on your menu trying to select a move and then it just like 
doesn't let you do anything for like a hot minute and you're just standing there like, yeah, I, I can't do anything, you guys. I'm just gonna wait until my menu allows me to click a button because that happens to me literally every single raid. So if that's what this is referring to, that's beautiful. Please fix that. Amazing, love that. A bug that causes communication error may occur when someone connecting to a Terra raid battle sees a different Pokemon displayed on their screen than what the host sees. This will be fixed. Okay, that is one that I have never experienced, but that's really weird and I would probably be annoyed by that too. A bug may occur that causes players joining a Terra raid battle from the Terra raid battles search screen to be brought to a Terra raid battle against a Pokemon different from the one that they saw displayed. This will be fixed. Once again, I have not experienced that. However, I don't really find myself trying to join random raids online because I can never connect to them. And the last thing that they're fixing for our Terra raid battles is a bug that causes Terra raid battle crystals to not appear for a set amount of time may occur under certain circumstances. This will be fixed. Honestly, when it comes to Terra raid battles, these are some great fixes, especially the HP thing and the lag thing when it comes to selecting something from the menu while the other Pokemon has moves that were already set to happen. So you're just kind of standing there doing nothing. All right, moving on to our battle patches. The first one here says type matchups against Pokemon that have fainted will no longer appear when selecting a move or target during doubles battles. A Zoroark that has terastalized and is disguised as another Pokemon via its illusion ability can be identified as a Zoroark by using the check target option. This is a bug and will be fixed. I mean, valid because then that just kind of nullifies the point of the illusion ability because you're just like, oh, that's not whatever Pokemon. It's literally just a Zoroark. So I'm going to use what's effective against a Zoroark and not the Pokemon it's disguised as. So love that they're letting an ability actually be useful. <laughs> when a Zoroark has Terastalize and is disguised as another Pokemon via its illusion ability, the type matchups of the moves are displayed based on the type of Pokemon that Zoroark is disguised as rather than Zoroark's Terra type. This is a bug and will be fixed. Okay, wow, I didn't realize that there was this many issues with Zoroark in battle, but at least they're getting fixed. The stats of a Dondozo with a Tatsugiri in its mouth will increase when Dondozo uses Order Up, even when the move should have been negated, for example, by an opponent using Protect. This is a bug and will be fixed. Okay, that's fair enough. You should not get a stat boost if your move does not make contact with the actual Pokemon. If a Pokemon terastalizes using Destiny Bond and then faints, the effects of Destiny Bond will fail to activate. This is a bug and will be fixed. These are such interesting bugs that I personally haven't experienced, but I'm sure somebody will appreciate all of these because these do sound like they would be annoying. And moving on to miscellaneous updates here. We will address an issue that can cause the game to forcibly close at certain locations. As a result of this fix, there may be a production of Pokemon and people displayed in certain towns or in the wild. So people were having a lot of issues where their game would just like crash in especially busy areas where a lot of Pokemon would spawn or it was just like a big busy town kind of area where there was a lot of NPCs around. So I guess they're fixing that so that your game doesn't just crash all of a sudden because there's like too much going on. It does kind of suck that it says that there is going to be a reduction of Pokemon. The NPCs I don't really care about, but the Pokemon that is a little bit of an L. When a Pokemon that is not part of the Paldea Pokedex is obtained through a link trade, it is displayed as being registered to the Paldea Pokedex. This is a bug and will be fixed. Once again, I have not experienced that because the only Pokemon that I have that are not part of the Paldea Pokedex are the ones that I get through the Terra Raid battles. But let me know if you've had this issue. Certain actions can cause the main character's expression to not change until the game is closed or reopened. This will be fixed. Ah yes, good. So your face will not be frozen anymore. A bug occurred for some players after Ranked Battle Season 1, wherein visiting the Ranked Battle screen immediately after the season's results had been calculated caused a communication error right after these players received their rewards. Following this error, players were unable able to participate in any further ranked battles. This will be fixed. <laughs> what? That happened? I would be so mad if that happened to me. If I just could not do any other ranked battles after like the season's rankings were calculated, I would actually be on the phone like, hello, fix this immediately. So good. Glad that I never personally experienced that, but I'm happy for those of you that did have to deal with that because that sounds like it would be very annoying. If a player has created several battle teams, but does not use the battle team in the first slot for their ranked battles, they may not receive the master ribbon after winning ranked battles in the master ball tier. This will be fixed. When a Pokemon you caught comes back to you from another player through a link trade, it may not listen to your commands in accordance with what is written in the profile app. Pokemon caught at level XX or below will listen to your commands. This will be fixed. Oh, okay. Okay, so basically what this is saying is like, if you traded someone a Pokemon that was at level 50, 
and they level it up to level 100 and they traded it back to you at level 100, it wouldn't listen to your commands regardless of if you had the correct number of badges to be able to control Pokemon at that level. So now you will be able to control Pokemon if you have the correct number of badges for its level. A bug is preventing the Pokedex from displaying additional entries such as entries for shiny Pokemon or Pokemon that were received through a surprise trade from players that play in a different language. For Pokemon species that were already registered in the Pokedex, this will be fixed. Objects such as Pokeballs may be displayed in certain locations of the field unintentionally. This will be fixed. I kept seeing so many like little meme videos of Pokeballs or just like random Pokemon just being where they shouldn't be. So they're fixing that. Passersby will no longer be displayed during certain battles that take place in towns during the main story. Oh, <laughs> this is literally like when the NPCs would literally walk through the middle of a battle and just be like having a merry day while you have like a whole entire Pokemon battle going on. So they're fixing that too. Which me personally, I always thought that that was really funny because I'm pretty sure that did happen to me when I was having a battle in front of like the school in front of like the gates but like I said I thought it was hilarious and lastly it says other select bug fixes will be implemented we also have a little note down here that says we are planning further features and bug fixes not listed in these patch notes please check back here for full details when the update data is distributed update contents and details are subject to change now this this here obviously they're hiding something here. And what it seems to me that they're hiding is the fact that they are getting ready to, I don't know, maybe add a DLC, since it says they're planning further features. Mm, maybe I'm reaching, but it sounds like they're planning something. And Pokemon Day is officially 10 days away since it's the 17th now. So something tells me that they plan this update to go live after Pokemon Day specifically so that they could announce the DLC first. But maybe that's just me coming up with conspiracy theories. Let me know what you think though. But there you have it. That is our very extensive list of all of the fixes that are supposed to be included in version 1.2 of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty pleased with a lot of these patches, especially when it comes to the Terra Raid battles, because a lot of those bugs were super annoying for me because I tend to do a lot of Terra Raid battles to farm for Terra Shards. But let me know your thoughts on this latest patch down below in the comments. And also let me know if you think my little conspiracy theory about them getting ready to release a DLC is on the right track. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much to those of you who have joined the channel as members. I appreciate each and every single one of you. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.